What do donkey carts, hand pumps, and jet barges have in common? They are all appropriate technologies being disseminated by IDE, International Development Enterprises. A group of entrepreneurs organized to help the poor in third world countries become self-sufficient. IDE started with three guys, in, uh, and I was one of those three guys, who got together and we each agreed that we would be willing to put up 10,000 bucks to try some of the ideas that we had dreamt about for two or three years previously. We don't do projects that give things away. We look for activities that we can, for instance, introduce a technology that a peasant can pay for and is willing to pay for. This young organization has had some striking successes. IDE has certainly been willing to take risks. But it has also developed clear project criteria. It works only with technologies that peasants are both willing and able to pay for, that earn a return of at least 100% in the first year, and that fit with the local culture. IDE defines constraints to development and design solutions that are both practical and economically viable. It then implements projects and turns them over to local people as soon as possible. Startup costs for projects currently come from the Canadian Agency for International Development, from USAID, and from private donations. And IDE spends less than 10% on administration. The hand pump project is a good example of how this approach is put to work. The fertile delta area of the Ganges covers most of Bangladesh and is the most densely populated area in the world. There are millions of small subsistence farmers struggling to support large families on one or two acres, living on the edge of survival. Hand pump irrigation could make a dramatic difference in the lives of these farmers. IDE's goal was to sell 20,000 hand pumps a year in a local, self-sufficient private system whose startup costs are being funded by CETA and private donations. Working with the Mirpur Agricultural Workshop and Training Center, which manufactures rower pumps in Bangladesh, IDE inaugurated a village-level marketing network. At its core is a group of 80 small village businessmen who act as sales agents. In the third year of the project, 20,000 hand pumps were sold in Bangladesh. Now IDE looks forward to withdrawing, leaving behind a successful, self-sufficient enterprise run locally. In 1988, over 30,000 pumps will be installed in Bangladesh, East India and Nepal as a direct result of IDE's efforts, placing 30,000 new acres under irrigation and earning an additional $3 million for the small farmers who buy and use them. Rates of return were also critical for IDE's first project in Somalia. But in this case, the buyers of technology were refugees instead of small farmers. In 1980, Somalia, a poor country of five million people, had a sudden influx of 350,000 refugees escaping from the war in Ethiopia. The refugees, used to a fiercely independent lifestyle, now found themselves leading a dependent existence in large refugee camps. The challenge for IDE was to help these people become self-sufficient. The only way goods could be transported in the camps was on people's backs. Donkey carts were not available. But IDE calculated that a good donkey cart would cost $450 and could produce over $450 in income per year. IDE organized six regional workshops to build donkey carts from junk car parts. 
The workshops were self-sufficient businesses owned by refugee trainees using IDE loans for capital. In three years, 500 carts were built and sold. Each cart earned a net income of $200 a month in a country where the per capita income was $120 per year. In fact, the carts are producing over a million dollars a year in net income for refugees. In 1986, an opportunity arose to test a totally different transport system. Nepal's scenery is magnificent, but half of its 16 million people have no access to roads. Life in the hill villages of Nepal has its own unique rhythm. Towns like Tumlingtar in eastern Nepal are regional centers for over 400,000 farmers who live four days' walk from the nearest road. The 20 tons of supplies that arrive each day at Tumlingtar are carried on the backs of porters. Carl Zimmerman, a 185-pound North American, attempts to carry one porter's load a few steps. The load weighs 230 pounds. The porter carrying it, 100 pounds. His journey will take six days. cost more than $500,000 a mile to build in Nepal and $3,000 a mile per year to maintain. But Nepal has some of the biggest rivers in the world. A river transport system could bring fertilizer and seed to hill farmers and help market their crops. But because the rivers are big, fast, and turbulent, they have traditionally been seen as too swift for navigation. Applying technologies already developed for rapid rivers in the United States and New Zealand, IDE tested an aluminum jet barge in Nepal in 1987. The barge is powered by a Caterpillar marine diesel engine and a Hamilton jet drive. Supported by funding from the Bureau of for private enterprise of USAID and by private donations, the limits of navigation of the three main river basins of Nepal were tested in low water in May and high water in September. Transporting the boat through villages and winding roads was almost as difficult as running the river. This rock boat ramp took a day and a half to build. Some sections of the river were easy to run. But these rapids on the Gandaki were difficult. can be made routinely navigable by rock removal. Pushing the limits of navigation required constant and unceasing hard work.
Everywhere the expedition stopped, crowds quickly gathered. The volume of water on the Suncosi in September was impressive, with sections of 20 mile per hour current and 15 foot standing waves. The Arun had some difficult rapids. An expedition headed by Sir Edmund Hillary the first man to climb Everest, lost a jet boat to this rapid in 1968 and turned back. But the IDE expedition was able to proceed upstream to Tumlingtar. Many parts of the river valley that are three days walk from a road are intensely cultivated with rice, citrus, and other crops. More than 600 kilometers of river was proved navigable. Two areas, the Gandaki Valley and the Arun River to Tumlintar, show special promise for commercial navigation. Both areas will require river modification. And each area has some 400,000 people, three days walk from the nearest road. The Gandaki Valley could be served totally by float down pontoon rafts. In Nepal, IDE's initial results are seen as a major breakthrough for the economic development of remote areas. The next step, supported by the government of Nepal, is to form a private river transport company and start a river transport system. Bringing transportation to areas now only accessible by walking can achieve dramatic economic impacts. To make sure that the new transport system benefits the poor as well as the rich, the transport company will be structured to give small hill farmers direct access to seeds and fertilizer and new markets for their crops. <laughs> Donkey carts in Somalia and rower pumps in Bangladesh were both desirable and affordable to the poor people who bought them. Donkey carts cost $450 and produce a return of $2,400 a year for 500 refugee families. Hand pumps cost $50 and return $100 a year to the 30,000 small farmers who will buy one in 1988. It is still too early to say what the results of the Nepal River Transport Project will be. But IDE will continue to implement entrepreneurial projects which help small farmers survive with dignity. Mm -hmm.